So I wake up at around 4.30 for Fajr. I pray my two rak'ahs of sunnah at home because the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that those two sunnah Hi guys, you're welcome back. My name is Sukumi Pika Girl. You guys are feeling good. So we're gonna be checking out this Muslim's best money routine. So let's check it out. We've all seen the millions of morning routine videos online and how people swear by its benefits. There's also tons of research that's been done on the effects of a productive morning routine and what it can do for your body, mind, and health. But my question is, how do we combine all of that with the Islamic principles and values that we've been taught when it comes to a morning routine? So I did some research and that's what I'm gonna share with you guys. Here is the most effective yet practical Muslim morning routine that you can start implementing. There's a common misconception we have that our morning routines start when we wake up, which on surface level makes sense. But what you do the night before is actually crucial for the quality of sleep you get and your energy levels the next day. Research has shown us that maintaining a consistent sleep schedule is crucial for optimal sleep quality and wakefulness. Going to bed and waking up at consistent times helps us set our internal clock or our circadian rhythm, which will optimize our energy levels and just overall well-being. Everyone's schedule is a little different, but what I do is I go to the masjid to pray Aisha, which is the signal for my body that the day's about to end. I don't bring my phone with me, so that way I'm not consuming blue light late at night, and so I can focus on my salah. After that, I get home at about 11.30, which gives me about half an hour to wind down. I'm still not using my phone or any electronics for that matter for the rest of the night. We've all heard this before, but the blue light from our devices can really disrupt our sleep-wake cycle, which will affect the quality of sleep you get and how you feel the next morning. So instead, I'll usually light a candle because they emit much lower frequencies of light than your normal lamp. And to be honest, they're pretty fun to use. I'll also usually do three things to help me fall asleep. I read, I read some more, and then I journal. I'll spend 10 minutes reading my favorite self-help book. Right now, it's David Goggins' new book, Never Finished. Super inspirational read. Love this man, you should definitely pick it up. And then I'll spend 10 more minutes reading Quran, namely Surah Al-Mulk, because the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us that whoever recites Surah Al-Mulk before they go to bed will be protected from the punishment of the grave. And then for the last 10 minutes, I'll journal my thoughts and feelings throughout that day which in my opinion is one of the most underrated habits there is. Being able to mentally recap how your day went and get it out of your head and onto paper is one of the best things you can do for your mental health. This allows me to flush out any negative thoughts and helps me become more relaxed and ready for bed. And it's also important for my own development, being able to kind of assess myself and see what went right and what went wrong throughout the day helps me improve on those points going forward. After that, I'll shortly say my night du'as and then it's lights out. Again, since I don't sleep with my phone in my room, I'll use my Alexa to set my alarm for Fajr or one of those old school alarm clocks. Either one works. If you're still sleeping with your phone in your room, this is probably the most important thing that you should really try to cut out. So I wake up at around 4.30 for Fajr. I pray my two rak'ahs of sunnah at home because the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that those two sunnah rak'ahs before Fajr are better than the entire world and everything in them. After my sunnah, I'll head to the masjid and pray Fajr. And I'll be totally honest, this has been a constant struggle for me for as long as I can remember. But if you can manage to force yourself to pray Fajr at the masjid, or at the very least wake up and pray it at home, you will start to see so many blessings enter your life. After Fajr, I have about an hour left until sunrise. So instead of going back to sleep, I'll stay up for that hour in the remembrance of Allah. This is because the Prophet peace be upon him told us that whoever prays Fajr in congregation and then sits in the remembrance of Allah until sunrise and then prays two rak'ahs will have the reward of Hajj and Umrah. Tam, tam, tam. Complete, complete, complete. So this is an incredible opportunity that every Muslim should take advantage of. I mean, alhamdulillah, I've been to Umrah and it's a very long, tedious process to get the tickets and the visa, to fly all the way out to Saudi Arabia, to actually perform the Umrah and the Tawaf, all, all the stuff in between. You can get that same exact reward by praying Fajr in congregation and then staying up until sunrise in the remembrance of Allah. 
and then praying to Raka. You and I have that opportunity every single morning. Usually I'll use this time to review my Quran and make my morning adhkar, but you can pretty much do any form of remembrance you want in this time. Once the sun rises, wait 10 minutes and then perform your two rakahs. And after I've done that, believe it or not, I go back to sleep. I know some of you guys might be thinking, I thought this was supposed to be a productive morning routine. You're supposed to wake up at 4 a.m. and stay awake. This is a big issue that I have with social media and all of these 4 a.m., 5 a.m. morning routine videos. They're unrealistic and unachievable for the majority of people. And unfortunately, the, the influencers who make these videos a lot of them don't do that consistently. Iman Ghazi mentioned this in a video where he basically said, you should be waking up at a time that is effective and makes sense for you and your schedule. If you have to go to work or school at 8 a.m. or even 7 a.m., then yes, it makes sense for you to wake up a little earlier, maybe at five, in order to get that morning routine in. But if you start your day a lot later, then you can still wake up at 8 a.m., maybe even 9 a.m., and still get a productive morning. That's what I'm doing right now since it's summertime, but once dental school starts, I'll probably have to wake up a lot earlier and start my morning routine then. So just do what works for you as long as you're actually being productive and, and following through with it. Once I wake up, it's time to eat. And I make pretty much the same breakfast every morning, a chicken avocado and egg breakfast wrap. You can eat whatever you want for breakfast as long as it's healthy, but I really like this because it's low carb and high in protein. Studies have shown us that you should try and stay away from eating too many carbs in the morning because it'll affect hormones like dopamine and cortisol, which can make you feel groggy and dull. And, and it's kind of common sense, right? When we eat a lot of kind of big fatty foods, we feel a lot tired um, and, and restful, but we don't want that in the morning. We want to feel energetic. So I really like this breakfast meal and here's how to make it. I'll then take my food and eat it outside in the backyard, which is actually very important. Now, Dr. Andrew Huberman mentions a few things that we can do in the morning to really increase our wakefulness. And probably the most important one in his opinion is exposing ourselves to natural sunlight. Light viewing early in the day is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day and it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. This has a huge impact on our wakefulness and energy levels for multiple reasons. It tells our brain that, hey, you know, it, it's morning now, which helps us regulate that circadian rhythm, allowing us to sleep better and wake up easier. It also triggers the release of serotonin, which is really important for regulating your overall mood, health, and just well-being. Studies have also shown that exposing yourself to natural light in the morning has been associated with improved concentration, attention, memory, and just overall cognitive ability. All of these reasons are why I've started eating my breakfast outside. That way I can also get my morning sunlight in at the same time. So I made breakfast, I'm getting my morning sunlight, and I'm honestly so happy with the way these mornings are turning out because I've seen so much improvement in my days when I have a morning routine. For the longest time, I kind of just woke up half an hour before I had to go to school, ate some high sugar cereal, didn't really look into any of the benefits of having a morning routine. And I can tell you guys the difference between then and now is monumental. So if you can try to at least implement a couple of these things, in your mornings and you will see so much benefit in your life. After I've eaten, I'll just do some really light stretches, which is my form of physical exercise in the morning, just because I prefer going to the gym later in the afternoon or evening. Loosening ourselves up a bit, especially in the morning when our muscles are the tightest, really helps our blood flow and mentally prepares us for the day. Next, I go upstairs where I head to my desk and open up my to-do list. I'll sit down and type out my goals for that day, what I want to accomplish, and what the priorities are for that day. People always ask, 
you know what what is the secret what's the underlying factor to your productivity and and being able to you know finish so many things in one day it's literally just this it's as simple as a to-do list in the morning the secret is right here all it is is just writing down what you want to do for that day and then scheduling it if necessary what what that does is it helps you prioritize tasks and set really clear objectives that way your mind isn't cluttered with what we call empty chores which are things that we do to make ourselves feel productive but they're really not important like cleaning out your cabin drawer for example when you have a five page essay due the next day doing this really helps me manage my time and reduce any stress that can come from uncertainty in that day and that's about it from there you can start your day however you see fit go to school go to work go to the gym whatever you need to get done i know it's a lot to remember so we'll quickly summarize the main points first off start from the night before by putting your phone in another room and pick up a book or a journal to help you wind down make sure to read surat al-mulk as well and then set an alarm for fajr and try to pray at the masjid if you can read quran and do your morning adhkar until sunrise then wait 10 minutes and pray your two rak'ahs Once you wake up again, make yourself a healthy breakfast and take it outside so you can also get your morning sunlight. Do some light stretches afterwards to warm up your body and then get ready for the day by writing down the important goals you want to accomplish. Of course, you can customize this however you see fit. This is what I came up with based off of what worked well for me and the research that I did. May Allah fill all of our mornings with barakah, with productivity, and with a strong connection to him. Thank you guys for watching another video. If you've watched till the end, go ahead and like the video. And if you're new here, join the fam, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Wassalamu alaikum. Wow. <coughs> wow, this is beautiful. This is how your day should be. You should start your day with prayer. You should end your day with prayer. You should be dedicated. So it's just giving us the routine, money routine for Muslims. How you can go about your day. And he said it starts, or uh, his prayer starts from night, from midnight. You will pray down and sleep early so I can wake up early for, you know, morning prayer for the Fajr. And beautiful. I love this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.